This is the Playdate, a fun, quirky, retro, yet modern gaming console with a crank. It's from Panic, the makers of Mac software like Transmit and Coda, as well as indie games like Firewatch and Untitled Goose Game. The company actually introduced the Playdate in 2019, but thanks to the pandemic and resulting global supply issues, production was delayed. Now, however, it's finally ready. It will be available for pre-order starting July 29th, 2021, with the first batch of roughly 20,000 units shipping towards the end of the year. The Playdate is priced at $179, which is $30 more than the original $149. But to make up for it, Panic will double the storage. It is now 4 gigabytes instead of 2 gigabytes. And it will also come with double the number of games, from 12 to 24. What we have here is a preview version of the Playdate. The hardware is final, but the system operating software is still not quite there. Still, I think it leaves a wonderful first impression. Designed in collaboration with Teenage Engineering, the Playdate is one of those gadgets that will just put a smile on your face. It's tiny and cute, barely the size of a stack of post-it notes. And it comes in this wonderful bright yellow. All of the buttons are responsive with just the right amount of clickiness. And of course, there's the crank. It flips out and you can spin it forward and backward like the reel on a fishing rod. The movement feels really smooth, not too stiff or too loose. It doesn't spin freely when you let it go, but that's a good thing. After all, the crank is designed to be a game controller and needs to be precise. The other unique thing about the Playdate is the screen. Instead of a normal LCD display, this is a sharp memory LCD, which results in super sharp pixels. The black and white images are really nice and crisp and look fantastic under bright sunlight. However, it can be hard to see in dim lighting. I wish there was some kind of backlight or front light because of that. However, the battery life is fantastic. I've left it unplugged for nearly two weeks and still has plenty of charge left. As charming as it is, the, a console is only as good as its games. This preview version only has four titles, Crankin's Time Travel Adventures, Lost Your Marbles, Saturday Edition, and White Water Wipeout. In Crankin, you use the crank to control the flow of time. As you try to get the Crankin character to meet his girlfriend Crankette on a date but there are various obstacles like bees and birds that get in your way. The trick is to position Crankin in the right spot to avoid them. So if Crankin bends down to smell the flowers, you need to time it so it happens exactly when bees fly overhead. It's a surprisingly tough game that I've had to repeat many times to get right. Heck, I'm still stuck on level five. Lost Your Marbles, on the other hand, is just silly fun. Here, a girl named Proda goes to work for a cat scientist named Marbells and brings her dog Minty on her first day. Things don't go so well and Minty ends up missing. Somehow, Proda also uh, loses her marbles in the process. As Proda goes around town trying to find her dog, you'll have to occasionally answer questions by rolling a marble around an obstacle course, rotating the crank so that the marble hits the solution you want. The puzzle here likely represents Prota's brain. The best part in this game is that there really is no wrong answer. That's because the weirder the answer, the more hilarious the story. For example, when you're picking the photo for Minty's missing dog poster, one of the options is for her butt. I didn't mean to select it, but I did it accidentally. This all sounds incredibly silly, but it's meant to be, and I found it amusing anyway. Saturday Edition, however, is a lot more serious. It is a point-and-click style adventure game that doesn't use the crank at all. Instead, all navigation is done via the buttons. You play the character of John Cornfield, who's had a history with aliens in the past, but is currently living on Earth. Much like a lot of other adventure games, you can interact with your environment and chat with other characters. I admit I haven't gotten very far in this game. I've only traveled around his apartment, the office, and the local shopping mall. I'll have to sink in a few more hours into this game before I uncover all of its secrets. And then there's Whitewater Wipeout, where you have to surf for 
as long as possible, performing as many tricks as you can to earn points. The only controller here is the crank, which you will use to control the surfboard. There will eventually be a global leaderboard, which you can use to compare your score to others. I enjoyed these games for the most part, but I did get pretty bored playing the same four games over and over again. That's why I'm super glad that included with the price of the Playdate is an entire season's worth of games. Two titles will be delivered every week for 12 weeks. This is really the main issue with an indie console like this. As adorable as the hardware is, it will live and die by how many games you can add to it. Thankfully, the indie gaming community seems to have embraced the Playdate. Tens of thousands of developers have already expressed interest in making games for it. Panic has also said that developers will be able to sell software and games that can then be sideloaded to the device, separately from the aforementioned Season 1 games. In the short amount of time I've had with it, I do still love the Playdate. But I recognize it's not for everyone. This is an indie handheld designed for indie games. This is not a replacement for a Nintendo Switch, and it's not meant to be. It is a decidedly niche device for a niche market. But that's also what is so appealing about it. The key, however, is to see if the interest for this can stand the test of time. As always, hit subscribe for more videos and see all of the news on Engadget.com.